Sharice and today in this video I'm gonna be doing a tutorial blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your lace frontal wig look natural while you have a curly wig on but the hair is freaking gorge today's hair is provided by her hair and I have in three bundles of their Brazilian curly I have in 20 24 24 and a frontal on my head so let's go ahead and get started on the video. I will be reviewing the hair towards the end of the video in case you're interested. Open these. So this is how the frontal looks, guys. Close in case you guys are wondering. Yes. Ooh la la, can't wait to install this. All right guys, so I'm gonna start off by putting on my gloves. Next, I'm gonna use some foil paper to go ahead and speed the process up. Then I'm gonna get a bowl and I'm gonna be using only one and a half scoops of BW2 powder. Then I'm gonna go ahead with my 30 developer and I'm gonna only put one scoop full of this guys, only one, and pour it in. Get your toothbrush or your brush and begin mixing. I like my consistency to kind of be like toothpaste, so kind of think Colgate while you're doing this, okay? You don't want it too watery and you don't want it extremely thick, so. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and get my frontal and I'm gonna lay it backwards on the foil and make sure you're holding one part of the lace and I'm just gonna lightly glide this mixture onto the frontal. I like to start off with the middle first, but that's where my middle part usually is. And then I go along the hairline. So I find that it works best this way because if it does change quickly, at least you got the hairline out of the way, guys. So think hairline first and then work your way to the back. Now there is no science to how you should put it on. Just put it on, guys. <laughs> don't overthink it. But you don't want to press too hard when you're doing this. Kind of lightly just glide the mixture onto it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Usually I keep the mixture on for about 15 minutes, but with the foil, I only had it on for about six minutes. So the foil really does help to speed the process up. Make sure you're watching this. What I like to do is- Siri, remind me to wash hair in 15 minutes. Okay, I'll remind you since Siri spelled here wrong. But anyways, um, what I like to do is after like three minutes, just go back and just check, pull the hair up. Let's see what's going on. But you can see the hair is changing pretty quickly, the knots. And I'll point it out to you guys. When you see the knots are pretty much flooded with the mixture, that pretty much means that it's starting to change. So it's time to wash it off. You don't want it to be on the hair for too long, guys, or you will have orange roots. And we don't need no orange roots. <laughs> we want it to look natural, like it's going on your scalp. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and shampoo it with the Shimmer and Light shampoo. And I only like to do one shampoo. I don't condition because I'm gonna end up rewashing the wig once I finish making it again. So I don't like to waste products. I'm gonna do one shampoo and that's it. Let it air dry on its own and begin the plucking process. I already made the wig into a wig. So this is how it looks right now. Honestly, I really like this though. And this is only three bundles and a frontal, y'all. So to get started with the plucking process, I, I like to have my hairline be a little bit wet. Some people use setting foam, I don't. I put the hair into three sections because it makes it easier. And I start off with one section, the next one, and then the next one. So you'll need a tweezer. My hairline is not like this, guys. So I'm going to purposely just scoop out a few and just pluck that away. I don't like to have a wavy hairline because that's not my hairline. And then it makes it harder for me to got to be glue it down. Alright guys, so as you can see, we went ahead and we tweezed the front so it mimics more of a natural hairline. And then as you can see over here, we tweezed as well. So this part over here is looking more, much more natural. This side is not tweezed at all. So let's look at the difference. So this is one side not tweezed and then this is the other side. If you remember, I pulled off this piece of hair because my hairline does not go this way so I don't need what's right here. So to break this down to you guys, what I always do is I like to go row by, row by row because it makes it 
it makes it make sense <laughs> so I'm going to just pull this out and separate it from the other side next you want to go ahead with your tweezer with my tweezer I like to pretty much pull off hair in every other section go right here and pull you want to pull that out and you want to go to the next section so you're kind of skipping the hair so from here to here to here to here to here so you don't want to go straight down and start pulling but once I'm done you'll see what I'm talking about when I say every other section so it starts to look like this so it's dark right here thin dark thin dark thin you see it's like gaps the part that are really dark, I'm going to go ahead and thin those out just a little bit. So now you can see it's like this. So we went from that to this. Now you want to go ahead and scoop out another row. And do not make your rows thick. You want them to be kind of thin so that so you can kind of see what you're doing. And kind of keep track of what you're doing. Okay, so go ahead, pull the hair this way. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same motion every other piece of hair so I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see in the camera So this is how it looks after doing each row by row. But now I'm gonna pin the hair back and then I'm gonna sporadically just go ahead and tweeze a little bit more. Now guys, this part is important. You do not wanna stay in the same section for too long, which means if you feel like you've plucked too much, you've plucked too much. Listen to yourself if you feel like you've overdone it because what happens is you'll go ahead and create ball spots. So what you wanna do guys is just sporadically go ahead and continue with the same motion of every other hair, every other section. So I like to always try on my wigs before I go ahead and cut the lace. So this is how it looks and damn, it looks natural guys. Like for real, for real, like that, it looks real good. I'm going to cut parts by the ears because it was um, too tall for my ear, too long for my ears. Sorry guys, the Jamaican just came out of me. It's, it's too long by my ears so I like to cut that part just so that it fits comfortably. Careful not to cut the hair also. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the lace. And I'm just going to start from the middle. And I'm not doing a super straight line. I'm kind of jagging it up a little bit. Just kind of like zigzagging my way from one side to the other. Honestly, looking in the viewfinder is so freaking hard. So <laughs> I had to kind of like go in the mirror and do the rest. Alright, so this is how the hair looks when it's wet. Absolutely love it. Now that we've made the wig, I want to show you guys inside of the wig. I used a mesh cap, so that's how inside looks. But I love how it makes right hair um, a little more snug on the wig. Let's go ahead and fit it on our heads. And I'm going in with my gotta be glued. Ha! Someone mentioned I say gotta be glued really weird, so um, I just noticed that I say gotta be glued instead of gotta be got to be glued. Gotta be glued. I'm gonna use gotta be glued. I'm just going to. Do the same exact process that we did before. Just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and use a rat toe comb or a comb. And I'm just going to hold it. And this is the most crucial part of this whole entire step. I'm going to hold it and then comb it back, alright? So this is what we're looking at so far. Um, a sock because I can never find my headscarf and you see how this part is lifting that's why it needs to dry all right guys so let's go ahead and tell Siri to put 20 minutes on the clock and
this is us, girl. Frontal looks up close. I think it looks pretty amazing, balls. If you ask me, <laughs> um, thumbnail. Yeah, so this is how it looks with no baby hairs. We're still doing this whole no baby hair. Team no baby hair, guys. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. This is like the third video with no baby hairs. I got a good feeling about this year. I love the hair. I have absolutely no issues with it. My favorite thing about this hair, I would say, about the company is the frontal. I love the way the frontal actually um, died. It died really quickly. Usually I need about 15 minutes for my frontals to look amazing and I only needed less than 15. So that was perfect for me. The frontal, um, if you're dark skin, you will need to tint your lace because it was, it is very light on me as you can see. Well, if you can see it. Um, so if you are like dark skin, you will need to tint it. But it is, um, very stretchy, which I do like a lot. I, you, I only needed three bundles because the hair is very full. For it being 24 inches and me using two bundles of 24 inches, I only needed two 24s and a 20. You don't need any more hair than that or it will be too heavy. But if you like heavy hair, go right ahead knock yourself out. Yeah, so this video was pretty much an updated tutorial on me bleaching my knots and plucking my frontal because you guys seen me do this before. Um, but since everyone's been asking, I kind of wanted to like do an updated tutorial. So that's what this video really was. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything, let me know down below. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And bye guys.